So welcome everybody. I'm Susan Hall from the Center for Teaching and Learning. So glad you're here on a Friday. Uh, we will be having two speakers today. So Michelle Beasley will start us off with a, a few words about accessibility. And then uh, our main event today is Cesar Hernandez, who's going to be talking about STREAM, which is a tool that the university makes available to all of us, which is a great tool for making uh, video accessible. So, Michelle, let me turn things over to you. Okay, thank you. We'll get, let Cesar get that to pop up. It's up, Michelle. Okay. Let me see. I'm not seeing. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Got it. Trying to get my two screens to coordinate here. Mm -hmm. I can see everybody in the same time. Okay, so um, we're just going to go over a few more accessibility tips for the the classrooms that you're um, facilitating right now. And so um, with that, just a few more additional thoughts on last week. And um, so let's go ahead and, and jump right into that. If you could switch that over for me. Okay, so um, my, my director, Moises Torostano, one of his favorite quotes is, begin with the end in mind. So, uh, always try to keep that in mind, Stephen Covey. And so we all want, no matter, and I mentioned it before, no matter where we're working, we all want students to graduate and to step into the next aspect of their life and be successful and be good representatives of UIW out in the community and just good community members. So um, that's thinking with the end in mind. So with that, we all have the same goal. So one of the best things, and I try to keep this in mind every time a student walks into my office when they're brand new is, I don't get that second chance to make a good first impression. So I think among uh, maybe even more than all of the technological tools, more than any other accommodation, one of the best things that we can do to promote open access for all students is just have that welcoming and approachable demeanor, um, especially first time freshmen coming out, they really come into my office, for instance, and they have this big deer, you know, deer in the headlights kind of look sometimes. And I just want to project a welcoming and approachable demeanor. And the same thing with your classes, because, you know, we're the adults here and we're um, in a position of authority. And I have to stop and think back, although it's been decades, to my first time in college. Uh, when I was in that position. So we just try to keep that in mind. So the, the best thing is to be approachable. And um, that, I mean, I hear that all the time. That's one of the things I do hear from students that is their favorite thing about their professors is that they welcome them and they, they are approachable. And maybe they've come from another school and maybe they didn't have that same experience. Or maybe if they had a bad experience, they're expecting that same experience here. Um, so that's just the, that's the thought on that. Um, if, if you're posting your course syllabi and course materials, if you could do that as soon as possible, because I do work with students and literally planning out their time, planning out their semester, and especially if they're requesting uh, books in alternate format, that's, um, you know, that's something that I have to consider as well, because sometimes it takes weeks and weeks to get that done. And that's a, that's a very detailed process to take an actual book and, and turn it into an audio format. Um, so getting those books, that book information um, out there as soon as possible is very helpful. And, and students um, do comment on the fact that they're, they want to know exactly, you know, what is expected of them. Kind of like when you have employees, your, your employees, they need to know exactly what you expect from them what their goals are supposed to be and and maybe not exactly how to get to that goal but the you know the basic framework of how to get there and 
as you, you know, teach your classes, but they need to have that clear picture of what it is they're going to need to be doing right up front. So sometimes students bring in their syllabi or, you know, maybe they're not understanding it and, and um, maybe they're a little apprehensive to go and ask, but um, we do encourage them to go back to their professors and ask and that you're not going to bite them. And so sometimes it's that, you know, they get more used to doing that, they will do it. Lots and lots of feedback. Um, sometimes you probably feel like you're giving more feedback than we need, but I don't think that's possible. So uh, the more feedback you can give, the better. And, and sometimes students come from a high school accommodation setting where they were given study guides. And we tell students, we don't ask the professors to give you a study guide unless they're giving all the students a study guide. So in other words, I tell the student, create your own study guide and then take it to the professor in their office hours and, and you know, ask, am I on track here in my studying? Is this the direction I need to be going or what have you? And maybe give them some tips on, on how to study because that's not always a learned uh, experience in, in high school is actually how to study. And certainly we have the, the tutoring center that, that works on study skills for students as well. Okay, go ahead. So um, back to accessibility, um, actually um, think tips that will actually help a student that might um, not, you know, have the best visual um, aspects. They, they might have some issues with their vision. They might be using a screen reader, things like that. So whenever you're, say, for instance, holding up something, just, you know, give it good visual descriptions. Um, don't just assume that, you know, everybody can see exactly what, what is going on there. So the more uh, visual descriptors, descriptors, the better. And as I mentioned last week, putting in that alt text on your images, you're just right clicking on your image and then your a little box will pop up and you just describe uh, what is in the image. So that's, that's very good for a screen reader. Go ahead. Now I made, I put this uh, background on here to give you kind of an example, uh, might be a distracting background and it certainly isn't easy to see the words. Um, so that's just kind of an example of a busy background. And this could apply to PowerPoints or it could apply to uh, your, just your Zoom setting uh, on your, or your background in your Zoom classroom. Because if a lot of students have issues with um, attention, then maybe they're going to be spend the whole time focusing on what is on that building uh, what is, what kind of car is that um, is that a 55 chevy or a, is that a ford what, what you know so they're totally missing your your message because they're so focused on what's going on in the background and uh and then you know the whole point of the the message is gone and then no, you know background noises of course some things can't be helped but um Background noises are certainly distracting. And so anything that you can do, like have a plain wall behind you so that the, the student is focusing on you and your message, um, that, will, that will go a long way in, in helping to get across, especially to those students that have issues with attention. Go ahead. And I don't know if y'all know who this gentleman is, but maybe many of you do, the gentleman on an Antiques Roadshow. I love to watch that. When I was thinking of loud, busy clothing patterns, he came to mind. So I, uh, I popped him in there. So busy patterns on clothing are very distracting. So solid colors, again, uh, work better on the clothing. Sometimes, you know, if we're in like an informal setting, like if you're doing your Zoom from home or something, you might have, say, a uh, maybe a cowboy's hat on. And so if this other student doesn't like the Cowboys, then they're just gonna be focused on the fact that they don't like the Cowboys. And or it could, that's just an example, but um, so any kind of logos or things like that that might be distracting and just get the student thinking in another direction might wanna avoid. Go ahead. And then the camera and microphone. So this is something that 
I'm going to be looking at purchasing because um, I'm kind of having some issues with camera and microphone that are, you know, just the basic one that came on the computer. So I think I can, you know, do some, do better with that. I have a lot of challenges. I, you know, I read you need a green screen. So I set up green screen and I've been having some challenges with that. So I just keep trying trial and error, but maybe practice with someone and see how, how is your audio coming across? How's your video coming across? Is there any interference? Um, there's one person that it seems when I've been having meetings, you know, group meetings, this one person's audio comes across very staticky. So um, that made me think like, I wonder, I need to see how mine's coming off. <laughs> um, so I think everybody needs to just check and see how their audio and video is coming across on the other end. Um, and so that's something I'm gonna be looking at as well. And so I looked at a few, you know, like what, what are good cameras to have on your, add to your computer. So these are just a few examples at the bottom of the screen that, that I think I might look at. And, but the problem is, is I think maybe a lot of these are sold out because there's so many people working from home. So I'm not sure if that's something that can even be found, but I'm going to try. And so I just had to put up someone there that we all know. Um, testing, is this thing on? Okay, go ahead to the next one. And then the lighting. Um, so that's another thing I, I've been having some trouble, you know, getting, in, getting enough lighting. And so, but the thing is, you could be in front of a very bright window, and if you, if you're kind of have the window to your back, and then the camera's in front of you, you're going to come out like a silhouette, and then, and then especially someone with limited vision is going to have even more trouble seeing you. Um, so just, you know, make sure that light is in front of you and not behind you. It reminded me when we would have the um, parent luncheons up in the sky room for orientations. How, this, how the stage is set up in, that, in the big windows. And then, you know, I, I could never see the speaker because they were just silhouetted. So um, that's why is that they need to move them away from the big window and kind of have the light facing them instead. Anyway, that's just a tip. Go ahead. And then we talked about, you know, the captioning last week. And then um, Caesar's gonna give you some some tips on that so that'll be very helpful here in a little bit and so just just try to play with that and, and see how um, how you can do with that that would be very helpful and you know if you proactively select video content that already has captioning that's that's really your easiest thing to do and that way you don't have to just scramble suddenly you know when that's needed so anything you can do way ahead is is really good saves you a lot of trouble. And again, that, that is helpful, not just for students with disabilities, but for a lot of different students, could be um, English is not their first language, and that seeing, that seeing that script pop up also reinforces what they're hearing. So you're hearing and, and seeing the information, so you're receiving it in a couple different ways. So that reinforces the learning. Go ahead. And then um, one suggestion was videos that are really long or um, I know your, your Zoom sessions are kind of finite, but um, for instance, if you're just having the students watch videos, maybe if, you, if they can be broken up into smaller segments if possible, um, that's not always possible, but um, and in between there, um, posing questions. So that kind of gets them, gets them, uh, gets their brain rolling again gives them something to think about in, uh, in uh, shorter segments of time. Go ahead. And then, um, you know, permitting the recording of the Zoom lecture so that the students can go back and, and listen to it again. Um, I, I think all students need to be recording their lectures because just think about, you know, watching a movie or a documentary or something. You don't catch everything the first time, certainly. There's, there's things that you do not get. No matter how good of a note taker you are or um, you might have a photographic memory or just excellent memory, there's always something you can get by going back in. 
and that that you know reinforces that learning and encourage them to you know go back and watch it again and then recording it that also helps with um you know maybe they don't need a note taker if that's if that's an option for them go ahead and so video remote interpreting so um, we do have um, one student presently that uses American Sign Language. And so this is just to let you know how this works. Um, so for the fall session, we're going to be, um, it, I guess it all depends. The plan is to come back into the classroom, right? And then some classes, may, you know, so there might be a mixture. Um, so we're not completely sure what we're gonna do. But either way, American Sign Language has to be provided for the student that is deaf, that requests it. Certainly, if it's on, you know, if the classes are online, um, it can be, it can be popped into their Zoom session. So they can just be pinned like, like you have all the guests here. And then that student would pin their interpreter to the screen so that it would constantly be showing the interpreter and then also the screen, uh, whatever's going on in the classroom. So typically the interpreters have physically been in the classroom. And so this is just another option. So they can be the remote or they can be present with the student where they're at. So, uh, you know, whatever, whatever works best for the particular scenario. Go ahead. And then, you know, Zoom has a page on a lot of different accessibility features you might want to check out. So I just wanted to, to pop that in there so you can you know look at all these tools again later. Go ahead. And that's it. I just wanted to thank you for everything that you do and the encouragement that you're giving the students. I'm sure that's um, more now than ever due to the situation. And um, just you know wish you all a good summer and whatever we can do to help you um, as a resource, please reach out to me or Director Moises Torostano our number and email is at the bottom of the page and we're just there to be a resource for you so whatever whatever we can do just please let us know thank you Michelle, thanks so much Caesar. you're going to take us to visit zoom now uh, take us to visit stream yes yes Again, my name is Cesar Hernandez, and today I'm going to uh, walk you through um, Microsoft Stream. Again, it provides um, captioning, and it provides also a transcript also for you when you post videos on this Microsoft Stream. And again, today I'm going to demonstrate you uh, Microsoft Stream and walk you through the steps. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open your like a web browser of your choice and you're going to navigate and log into your Cardinal apps. Just going to click on Cardinal apps and again to access Cardinal apps you go to the University in Cardinal Word then click on Cardinal apps and then log in and after you log in to you sign in with your campus username and password to log into your Cardinal apps. And then you're gonna locate a button. It's called the employee employee mail button. You're gonna click on the employee mail button. And then on the top left-hand side, after you click on the employee um, mail, on the top left-hand side, you're gonna click on this waffle. It looks like a little waffle icon and it's located on the top left-hand side. It's right next to the Outlook. Um, icon. And then once you click on the waffle, you're going to locate a um, button. It's called stream. And if you're not able to easily find it, just click on show all apps and then you're going to click on the stream button. After you click on the stream button, you're gonna arrive to this location. There's the, um, the home button, the discover, my content, but the area we're gonna focus on this afternoon, it's the create button. So you're gonna click on the create button 
and it gives you um, these choices, upload a video, group, channel, record screen. Today we're gonna focus on, you're gonna click on create, and then you're gonna click on upload video. After you click on upload video, you're gonna get this, um, this area where you could either um, drag your video files directly to this web page area, or you can click on browse. After you click on browse, you can locate the video wherever the video is located within your computer. Because we're gonna um, choose what video you wanna upload to Microsoft Stream. So again, you can drag the video to the web page or select browse link to browse the video. And after you click on browse, you select the video you wanna upload, it's gonna start uploading. You're gonna name your file. Here I name my file, Caesar Welcome Video. You're gonna provide a description uh, you're gonna video language. Make sure you choose English, so the so the transcription system knows what language it wants to transcribe it in. And then it starts uploading. And then you're gonna scroll down, and you're gonna select permissions headings. Again, you could um, publish to a particular private group. You could um, publish it to a, you wanna, you could also share it to a particular person. So you could, or you can just share it with yourself and you could later on share it with either a group or a person. So here I chose just to share it with myself. I do wanna share it with others, not yet. And also, um, do not check the label that says allow everyone in your company to view this video. You want to leave that unchecked. Because if you leave that check, then your video is published to the whole university. So again, do not check the box that says allow everyone in your company to view this video. You want to leave it unchecked. Not unless you want to share the video with the entire university. Once the video has finished processing, again, you're gonna click on publish. Publish the video. Oh, you could also, know, you could also select the, um, what type of thumbnail you wanna use. And as you can see here, um, this is a video that I published in Microsoft Stream. You click on the um, close captioning button to see, to turn on the live captioning. You could also on the right hand side, you click on the little pencil. You could also edit the transcriptions also. So now I'm gonna show you live the whole process now that I walk you through the whole steps. So let me hit stop share. So again, to log in, you're gonna click on Cardinal Apps to access your employee email. You're gonna click on employee email and then it takes you to Microsoft Stream. Here, once you're in Microsoft Stream, you're gonna click on Create. You're gonna click on Upload Video. And again, you can drag the video here or you can click on Browse so you can locate the video you wanna upload. Click on Open. And auto it automatically starts uploading your video. You wanna name your video. how to upload videos in stream, how to upload videos in stream. Make sure you select the language because this is gonna help the, with the captioning, the closed captioning. Again, these are all the languages that you can, English, 
and then it starts processing. Permissions. Again, right now I do not want to share the video with anybody, not yet. So I just want to share it with myself. But in the future, if I do want to decide I want to share with other people, I could share with a private group. I can also share with a particular person. Also, make sure you uncheck allow everyone in your company to view this video because you don't want to share with the whole university, not unless you want to. So you want to make sure you uncheck that. It says remove company wide access to this video and click on yes. And you click on options, you're going to scroll down and click on options. Make sure that the captioning is auto generated caption file is turned on. Say it's processing complete. You can choose a thumbnail here. Once it's finished processing, you're going to click on publish. And it has been published, Publi update. Once it's finished published, this is the way it's gonna look. I'm gonna hit play. Hit play. And as you can see, it has, um, here you can turn on the live captioning turn it off and turn it back on. It's up to the student if they want to have live captioning on and off. Here on the right hand side, again, this is the transcript it also provides, this is very helpful. You, as a owner of the video, you could also edit the transcript here on the right hand side. So again, it provides captioning, live caption, I mean, it provides the closed captioning and the transcript on the right hand side. And these are just the basic steps of um, uploading a video to Microsoft Stream. And it automatically, again, adds the closed captioning and the transcript also. Um, Cesar, uh, we have a question which, which is exactly the question I was going to ask. And so here's the question. Can you uh, put a link in uh, Blackboard? To this? Oh, thank you very much for the question. The, que the answer is yes. You just click on share. And this is the link that you'll that you'll add to your mark. I mean, Blackboard or or to a Canvas also. Thank you for the question. So, Caesar, Blackboard. I would like create a web link, give it a title, which is the title of the video, and put that link in the URL space, and I'm ready to go. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Where does it save? It saves, um, so where it saves is it saves all the videos under my content and then videos. So all your videos will be here. So Cesar, will yeah. they be able to download the, the videos? So this is uh, not allowed, they can only watch? Right, they could only watch, only the owner of the videos could download the videos. Great question, thank you. And what about, the, no, thank you. And what about the accuracy of the capturing? Because uh, Zoom doesn't do an awesome job. So I don't know if it's because I have an accent and that's why it's kind of like messed up. Or do you think this is a little bit more reliable than uh, Zoom closed yeah. captioning? Um, it's a little bit more, uh, Microsoft has been working on their um, closed captioning. So it, it's pretty close, but there's a little, you have to, if it doesn't, you could always edit the, the transcript also. Is there a question? What's the time limit on the videos that can be recorded? There, there's no, there's no time limit, but we recommend that you do short, short videos just for the student's attention span. And if I have a um, narrated PowerPoint, save it as a video and proceed as above, right? Yes. Okay. Great question. Oh, does it expire? Does it? No, it stays forever on your My Content videos. There's no expiration.
yeah, this is a really easy process. Just let it. Uh, uh, this uh, another uh, comment. This seems similar to uploading to YouTube. Could you talk about pros and cons of this tool versus YouTube? Um, Microsoft Stream is just um, university, so only videos that you upload here is only um, you can only share within the university. Um, again, um, YouTube is more public um, platform. Okay, let's go for questions. We have anything else in the chat? Says, can you download the transcript? Let me see. I was basically wanting to know, you said that we can't download the video, the, the students can't download the video. So if they can't download the video, I'm assuming they can't download the transcript either. All right. So is there a way for faculty to copy the transcript and then post it into Blackboard separately? Because we just got the presentation earlier that we should try and make our transcripts available to the students. Yeah, I was able to, I was able to just copy and paste the transcripts, sir. Great. Thank you, Caesar. That that's You're a welcome. great thing to know. Okay, other questions. Uh, let's see, there's a question about Spanish. Um, does it limit to one language? I asked because my videos are bilingual since I speak Spanish. Can it recognize more than one language in the same video? I think you have to choose what language you want to transcribe when you publish it. Over here in the create upload video. Yeah, you have to choose. I think they have the English, Spanish, and I think one other language. Browse. So how's that going to look, Caesar? So let's say there's a block of Spanish, and then there's a block of English, and there's a block of Spanish. Yeah. Let's say you choose Spanish. What's going to happen when uh, the video has English? No transcription? Garbled transcription? I think it's going to um, try to just like close okay. to what, okay, that, so what it thinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> OK. Great question, though. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh... OK, before we um, adjourn for today and a little early, which I think is a good thing on a Friday, a uh, couple of announcements. Next week, the two o'clock Zoom meetings are taking a little sabbatical. Um, the uh, Flip Academy, the online course is starting up that week and um, uh, Kathy and Caesar and uh, Terry and Adele and I have all we can say grace on to get that going. Um, but you are welcome to it. And then we will start the Zoom pieces again on the 10th probably be just once a week for three weeks. And we'll be having sessions by Robert Talbert, who is the author of Flip Learning, the book that we're using in the Flip Academy. But he is, uh, everyone is invited and uh, he's an extremely nice guy, good presenter. So we'll be sending out reminders about all of that. So even if you, uh, you're not in the Flip Academy, uh, he'll, be saying, he'll be talking um, on the 10th, the 17th and the 24th. We'll send you more details on that. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.